to start off by saying Shalom, all praises to the Most High, Ahaya. Uh, tonight's lesson, we're going to break down um, the Christian religion, where it came from, and uh, how people are worshiping it today and don't even have a clue who they're worshiping and, and, and how it all happened. So, we're going to go into some precepts and things like that to, to break it down. Alright, so let's get right into it. Um, go ahead. Yeah, 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 let's start with start. Right it says, the name was given by the Greeks or Romans, probably in reproach, the name first given at Antioch to the followers of Jesus. It was first used in Antioch. Alright, right, so it says that the name Christians was given by the Greeks or the Romans, right? And it was first given in Antioch. First of all, Christ, which is our Savior, he was a Hebrew. Okay? And Therefore, the Christian religion cannot be tied to him if it was first given in Antioch, right? which is Syria. Okay, Christ was in Jerusalem, and he was a Hebrew. Antioch is Syria, so those 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 are two different regions, but yet. The Greek and Romans found a way to get everybody worldwide, uh, which is universal, to accept this religion. Let's go to Acts 11 and 26. But nobody's asked questions. And when, our, when our ancestors got this religion pushed upon them, they really, they really didn't ask no questions where it came from or why are we worshiping it. But you have to understand what, what was going on back in those days when when our people came from out of uh, slavery. Uh, of, of course, our people didn't have too many rights. Of course, they're, they're, they're free, but they, their rights are still limited. They still don't have the same rights. So along with the movement of, of Martin Luther King coming in and pushing the agenda to bring everybody as one and everybody together and close, it, it truly really brought our people away from who we was really supposed to be and what we were really supposed to be following just to be a part of the, the freedom of being like the so-called white man, right? And since we took that, that pill versus the pill of who we truly was and just keeping our poverty and sticking with that, we we accepted the pill, the blue pill, and said, hey, uh, well, we, we want to be like them. We want to be free. We want to have rights. So once we took that pill, our people, then they started following their gods and, and their idols and different things like that. And so just slowly but surely over time, uh, the information that we're going to bring tonight was washed away because from generation to generation, nobody asked questions. It just due to, due to uh, tradition, people just kept continuing to follow these practices. All right, let's go to Acts 11 and 26. We're in the book of Acts 11 and 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So it says that the disciples, when they went to teach into Antioch, which is Syria, they, you know, because that's what they did. They went into the other nations to teach, to try to wake up the Gentiles, and not only the Gentiles, but the uh, Hebrews, which are the Israelites that was in these other nations, which were also Gentiles, because just because you are a Hebrew, but it, if you're living amongst the Gentiles and doing Gentile things, you are now a Gentile, especially if you don't know who you are. So 
when the disciples were in these other nations speaking in the, in the word of Christ, they were being mocked by being called Christians first in Antioch versus being called what they should have been called, which was disciples or, or brethren. They, they called each other by certain names. They, you never heard a, a disciple called a, another disciple Christian. Hey, my Christian brother. Yeah, you don't say that nowhere. Uh, but this is what they were called when they went to Antioch. All right. So they had no respect when they was in Antioch. Break down the word Antioch. We got uh, Antioch. We're in the Strong's and it is G490. Greek 490. We got Antiochia. Antiochia. Antiochus, a Syrian king, a place in Syria. Antiochia. All right? So, Antiochia, Antiochia is a Syrian king that helped push this agenda, all right, in his, in his time and, and through his sons because Antio King Antiochus uh, also, uh, uh, his sons... After him, it was almost like the title of the Pope. All right, once one Pope is done, then Pope such and such come. Then put, you be like, dang, are all the Popes the same name? No, they just, they just a tradition. They just come in as, as the Pope. So King Antiochus, all right, a Syrian king. That was, that was the title of whoever the king was at that time in Syria. All right, so Antiochia and Antioch, this is where the Christian religion was was now formed and like I say Christ was a Hebrew in Jerusalem okay uh, let's go to let's, let's, so let's break down where the Christian religion came from give him that we're going to go to the the world religion book okay uh, and this is just a college book uh, if you want to go to 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 college and get like a a religion course or, or study something like that this is this this book this class is one of the classes you'll get in and this book I'm reading out of is just one of the books that you would have to study or do what you do to pass the course let them know what what chapter you're from show us show us a ring that uh, chapter just in case if they want to go get this book and get this information we have a uh Greek and Roman religions and early Christianity were in um, experiencing the world religions, traditions, challenge and change, fifth edition. And we're just going to skip around. All right, so go ahead and start up there. Where we at? We're in uh, page th 366. And it reads, first paragraph, if you are ever in Rome, be sure to take a walk from the Colosseum westward through the Roman Forum along the Via Sacra, which is sacred weight, because the large stones of the ancient road are still there. You can easily imagine what it must have been like for a visitor to Rome in the first century CE. At the end of the Forum rises the steep Capitoline Hill. The ancient center of government and the location of the temple of Jupiter, the father of the gods. So it tells you, if you're ever in Rome, make sure you go down along via sacred, which is sacred way. So make sure you go down this, this area so you can see this image. Alright? And what image do they want you to see? the temple of Jupiter, who is the father of all the gods, all right? So now when you get into what they're talking about, which is the, the, the Greek mythology, Jupiter, you say, well, Jupiter, yeah, Jupiter, you, you heard that, right? Jupiter, which is the planet that you've been taught to in school, these, these dead rocks that you see in the sky, you're taught there were, there were planets named such and such and such, which were their gods, the father of the gods. So when it says the father of the gods, it's talking about all the other planets. Jupiter, the father of, of the planets. And we're going to break down who Jupiter is. 
Okay. Let's go to uh, First Maccabees. In the in the apocrypha, we're going to go into First Maccabees uh, one verse forty one. So uh, uh, First Maccabees chapter one verse forty one, and the apocrypha is just uh, the books that were taken out of the Bible. But if you have the sixteen eleven, then those books are interjected right into the Bible as it should be makes it whole Maccabees chapter 1 verse 41. Well, first Maccabees 1 and 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So remember, we already broke down in the beginning. Alright? We broke down that the word Christian was first used in, in Antioch and we broke down Antioch and Antioch means a Syrian king which is Antiochus and remember what I say so so it's like a president all right he the Syrian king he was named Antiochus but like I say it's like uh, the Pope that title just goes down from whoever is the next person in charge that's why it says the word Antioch means Syrian king all right read that again we in uh, 1 and 41 in the Apocrypha, 1 Maccabees. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So he says it's time for everybody to stop being one people. Right? Uh, you guys can't be following your power and then we be following our, our, our power, which is their God. Alright? And he says, y'all have y'all own laws, we have our own laws. No, we're going to make everybody one. All right, let's uh, let's hold your spot right there. Let's go to uh, Romans nine and nine and nine and one. And then that way we can see what Antiochus is saying when he says everybody needs to be one. All right, start at four. Go ahead, read four. We're in uh, Romans nine verse four. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High in the promises? So it says, who are Israelites? And then after that, it tells you who they are. The people that pertaineth the adoption, which is Christ's blood, all right, and the glory, which is the kingdom, okay? And the covenants, that's the old covenant in the Old Testament and the new covenant in the New Testament. And the giving of the laws, the law and the commandments. And the service of Ahiah, which is the Most High, it says. And the services of the Most High and the promises. So all the promises that he told you you was going to get as long as you submit yourself to him and suffer. All right, just like his son had to suffer. And then once he sees your faithfulness, then you'll get the promises that was a, 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 a once uh, granted to you. But it says, who are the Israelites? And these are the Israelites, these people that pertain to these, these, these special things from the Most High. So now let's go back to the Apocrypha. So, uh, King Antiochus said, nah, we don't care who y'all are, Israelites, nah. You, you guys are no longer special. I'm King Antiochus, and this is how we do it in Syria. Go ahead. We're in uh, verse 42. And everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed, according to the commandment of the king. 
Yeah, many also of the Israelites consent to his religion and sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and to and the cities of Judah that they should follow strange laws of the land. So it says, hey, I want these people to follow the strange laws of the land. All right? And I want them to uh, uh, profane the Sabbath. So they're going to be going against the Sabbath. Okay? What's the Sabbath? The Sabbath is Friday evening to Saturday evening, not Sunday morning. So that's what it means when it says profane the Sabbath. So he said, hey, Israelites, y'all have y'all own laws. I'm going to make you leave your laws, okay, and follow our laws. In our religion. Read, read 42 and 43 again. We're in uh, verse 42. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agree. According to the commandment of the king. And sacrifice unto idols. And profane the Sabbath. Excuse me. Yeah. Many also of the Israelites. Consented to his religion. To his religion. What's his religion? His religion is the Christian religion. So many people consented to his religion. All right? Because they had no choice. He came in and said in the beginning of this, right? When we read in 41, that all should be one people. So you people are no longer going to be special and follow your laws. You're going to follow what we do. Skip down to verse 50. We in verse 50. And whosoever will not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So if you didn't do this, you were going to die. All right? It wasn't no, no mercy on anybody that didn't decide to do this. You had no choice. All right? But to stop following the laws and the true word of the Most High, you have to leave those alone, what we just read in Romans 9 and 4 and start following his laws and his commandments and his religion and his idols and his images, everything. Because if you didn't do so, you were going to die. 2 Maccabees 5 and 21. So what we're breaking down tonight is, 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 is not to say, hey, all right, well, just to prove someone that they're wrong. No, let's get to the, the correct information on what we're following and what we're doing. All right, and I mean it's not it's not our people's fault that we fell into the hands of the the Syrian king. All right, and once we fell into the hand of the Syrian king, this is this is this is what happened. All right, five and twenty one, Second Maccabees. We're in uh, Second Maccabees chapter five, verse twenty one. So when Antiochus had cried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents, he departed in all haste into Antiochia, weaning in his pride to make the land navigable and the sea passable by foot. Such was the hardiness of his mind. So it tells you that King Antiochus had hardiness in his mind. He was coming in to bring in evil thinkings okay he didn't want to have nothing to do with keeping the laws of Ahia which is the most high he had evil thinkings from the time he came in as the king okay go to 2nd Maccabees 6 verse 1 we're in the book of 2nd Maccabees chapter 6 verse 1 not long after this the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. So it tells you right now, King sent a man, all right, among the Jews to make them depart from their fathers. So he wasn't done, all right? This man was after our people. Go ahead. We in the end of verse 1. And not to live after the laws of the Most High, and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius, and that in Gerzium 
of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in their place. Okay, so it tells you that that the king sent the old man into J Jerusalem among the Jews and said, hey, you guys must depart from the laws of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the laws that Moses brought. You guys have to get away from that. All right, and not only did he do that, he says that they came in and polluted the temple as they was talking to the Jews. All right, took the ramshack the temple and, and turned it in to the temple of Jupiter. So this is where you get Jupiter from. You remember earlier we was reading when it says when you get to Rome, make sure you go down via sacred way, all right, to, to see the, 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 the temple of Jupiter. That's what we read out of the college book. So when you read in 2 Maccabees 6 and 2, it says that they polluted the, the, our temple in, in Jerusalem, told our people they had to depart from the laws of, 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 of Ahia. Follow his religion. If you didn't, you were going to die. All right? You guys are no longer Jews. You guys are who? Christians. You're, not, you're no longer uh, uh, Jews. You're going to do what we do. And king Antiochus said, which is the Syrian king. And, and so Temple of Jupiter, verse 3, go ahead. We're in verse 3. The coming of, in of this mission was sore and grievous to the people. So the people were sickening. They couldn't believe what was going on. For the temple was filled with riot and revelling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And beside that, brought in things that were not lawful. They brought in all kinds of things that they have nothing to do with saving your soul. All unlawful. Go ahead. The altar was filled with profane things which the law forbid it. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days, or ancient feasts, or, eat, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So the end of verse 5 says they profane all things which the law forbid. So they went against everything that was against the law. So they grabbed the laws and the commandments and said, all right, we're not going to do that. We'll do the opposite. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the opposite. We're not going to do that. So everything that we're supposed to be doing here in the flesh, they have you doing opposite of. So you got to truly look at your life. So not just with this religion that we're breaking down tonight. Everything. Everything you think about. George Washington, the first president. No, he wasn't. All right? There's a lot of different things you got to just stop and say, hold on. All right? Let me pull this up for myself and start researching versus being taught like a, a, a machine, a zombie. Control. All right? Break away from the, the controlling of, of your mindset that was put in you and read for yourself. And now you can reprogram yourself to be saved. Right now... They have you programmed to go to, 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 to hell, which we all go to hell once we die. But they have you programmed to go to the wrong spot, which is to the left, which is the place of torment, which is Satan's seat. So you have to reprogram yourself and, and really take in heed to the important information that's out there to, to help you save your soul. That's why the, the saying is, the truth shall set you free. All right. Read that last verse six again. Verse 6, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself to be at all a Jew. So it says it wasn't even lawful for you to keep the Sabbath day. You no longer could keep the Sabbath day, which is Friday evening to Sunday. Now you have to, I mean, Friday evening to Saturday evening. Now you have to follow their Sabbath day, which is the, the first day of the week, which is Sunday. All right. And you couldn't even say you was a Jew. You said you was a Jew. Hey, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Jew. You got killed. You had to say you was a Christian. You had to buy into what was going on. And if you didn't buy into it, you were going to get killed off. Okay? So for generations and generations, tradition after tradition, holiday after holiday, none of our people, nobody said nothing about this. They just kept following these customs. Like I say, dealing with Martin Luther King, who, who's going to argue with, with this, this movement that Martin Luther King is wanting to bring our people together? And once you bring them together, now you have rights, you'll be equal. Our people wanted that. 
they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know they was they by walking away and following the, uh, his his laws and his story. And now you don't have to worry about white only and black only back then. You're just happy to, that, hey, I don't care who I'm following now. But if our people would have stuck together as people and said, hey, Martin, no, we, we don't care. We're free now as long as we're not in slavery. We can make it from here. Hey, they still got white only, black only. Yeah, that's cool then. We got our got, we got our power. They got our, their power. Our power is a higher here. He'll make us out of this. But that movement brought us together to what? Uh, we forgot about who we was just to be like them, just to get up, get out of our situation. Who, who, who wouldn't have did that back then, not knowing that they was sacrificing themselves away from their, their true power? All right, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. All right, let's go to a couple of, couple of places in the Bible where it, where, uh, it talks about being Christians. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 16. We're in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the Most High on this behalf. So... So the reason why I go go to these precepts, because now we're deep into uh, our people have been converted to Christians by by this time. So Ahia says now if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Ahia on his behalf. So now you people, all right, y'all suffering, y'all been transformed into Christians you can't stand up for yourself because if you stand up for yourself and say hey I'm not a Christian I'm a true Jew I'm a Hebrew you got killed so now he says hey they're going to kill you if you stand up for who you are so if any man is suffering this don't be ashamed do what they're telling you to do but let him be glorified in, in the highest behalf a higher has your back all right but now that's not the case. That's not the case now. We do not now have a king standing over our head saying, hey, making sure that we're going against a higher. Make sure we're following the wrong Sabbath. Making sure we, we, we are in a place now to where you can find your freedom. So actually finding our freedom, having our freedom is actually giving us a chance to find out who we are. We're not in a nation to where they're making you follow a certain religion. When you're in these other countries, you have to be Buddha. It's, 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 you have to be a, a Muslim over in those areas. You know, you, you have to follow their, their, their practices. If not, they're looking at you funny and they don't find a way to get you out of there. But at least here in America, you can be whatever you want and you can find your true self. But not too many people are searching in the right direction. A lot of people are are, are, are are tagged along with all this. You can be who you want to be in these religions. You don't need a power as long as you believe that, that Oprah Winfrey stuff. Now Beyonce, Kanye West, they all on, on their own journey. And that journey is, 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 is Satan. But our, our people at the back, back in those days, our people were suffering as Christians because remember what we just read it says our people couldn't believe this was happening in 2nd Matthew 6 and, 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 and 2 it says our people couldn't believe this is what was going on so they were suffering becoming Christians when they knew they wasn't Christians but they couldn't say nothing they couldn't do nothing because you say something you got killed alright let's go to uh Acts 26 and 27. Alright, go ahead. We're in Acts 26, 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. All right, 
So these people, by this time, our people are already being converted into being Christians, and they wasn't, though. All right, Paul's coming into these towns to talk and just let people know who Christ was and, and to wake them up to give them salvation. Now, this time, salvation is given unto the Gentiles. All right, Pers let's break down persuaders, though. What does persuaders mean? Persuaders, we got... G3982, G3982, and it is Pito, Peto, it is P E I T H O, and it is to, to convince. All right, we'll stick with convince. So it says, it's the, the king said, You almost convinced me to be a, a Christian. All right. And read verse 20, uh, verse 29. And Paul said, I would to the most high that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am, except, except these bonds. All right, except these bonds. So Paul is coming in to say, except these bonds, all right, where, where, where you have to be bonded with, with a higher in Christ, with the word that I'm bringing you. See, these people were already following after their idols and their different religions. So the disciples went, was going into these areas to try to teach the people to, try, to follow the true word. All right? But remember what I read in the beginning. The disciples were already being mocked as being Christians. All right? In, in Antioch. They wasn't being called who they truly should have been, which is disciples or brethren or anything like that. They were being mocked, all right? And after a while, when people seen that, how that name Christian kind of stuck and, and it was a mockery, but it was sticking, then it just became a universal thing, okay? All right, so you have to understand because they're, they're trying to find a way to uh, do the true people. Christ had a true people, true set of people, which is the Israelites. We read it in Romans 9 and 4. So when, when the Romans knew that, they said, well, hey, we just killed him. Now we're going to kill off the disciples, and now we're going to kill his word. And, 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 and in order for his word to never be rise, rising again, why would they kill off Christ's word and then let it rise again that easy? No, they said, we're going to kill them, kill him, kill them, kill off the true word, and then smash it in the ground. So they says, in order to do that, we have to come up with something worldwide that goes against who he is, right? So they was in support of the mocking of the disciples being called Christians. And when they seen how it was actually pushing along and people was jumping on board with it, then that's when they made it permanent, okay? Let's go to Acts. Uh, let's go to... Let's go back to uh, back to the college book. Okay, and let's see. All right, let's go. Let's talk about. Go ahead and go to Acts 26 and 32. Read that. We're in Acts 26 and 32. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. All right. If he had not appealed unto Caesar. Okay, so it's now Caesar. Caesar was a title also. All right, so just like Pope, all right, uh, anything to that nature, Caesar was just like uh, King Antiochus. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about these different titles back in that day. Because uh, you had who was called Julius Caesar. Go over there and tell me what it talks about Julius Caesar right, uh, right there by July. We have July. 
It says, named for Julius Caesar after he was declared a god. So July was named after Julius Caesar after he was declared a god. So their gods were real important to them. All right? Just like Jupiter. All right? And who was Jupiter? All right? Jupiter was the supreme god. We read that earlier. That's when you go down the road, they say, make sure you go see Jupiter. And then when King Antiochus sent the man down in to compel the Jews and told them to stop following the laws of their fathers, he says they polluted Jerusalem and then turned the temple into Jupiter. So Jupiter is their main god. Who was Jupiter? Zeus. All right? Who was Zeus? Jesus. Who was Jesus? Jesus. So Jesus was was now their supreme god, and then you had people like Julius Caesar, who was... Uh, July was named after him. Okay, these people had power. And a lot of people don't realize when Julius Caesar, when he became a god, he was so powerful. He said, man, because by that time, uh, uh, all the months were almost somewhat equal. They had 30 some days or something like that. So July had 30 days. When Julius Caesar became a god, he was so powerful. He took a day from February and made February 30 days to 29 days and made July 31 days. And that's why February started getting shortened. And then when Augustus Caesar was named the guy after August, he did the same thing. He said, well, damn, get, well, 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 if Julius can do it, I can do it. And he's like, so now February is down to 28 days and July and August has 31. So this is how powerful these guys were. Okay? But let me, let's get a few precepts on what the true disciples were really called, what the disciples were truly calling each other. Alright? Let's go to Acts 15 and 1. We got Acts chapter 15 verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So these are the disciples talking to each other. But they talk, they talk, they call each other brethren. Talk the brethren. So certain men came down to teach the brethren. Okay? 23, 15 and 23. We had uh, verse 23. And wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sicilia. All right, so it tells you right here that I wrote letters by them after the manner. The apostles, the elders, and the brethren. And send greetings unto the brethren. So send greetings unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch. Our brethren was sent to, to, to Antioch to talk to the Gentiles in Syria. So send greetings to the brethren. It didn't say send greetings to the Christians. Send greetings to the Christians that's, that's, that's in Antioch. They never referred to each other as Christians. They called each other brethren. That was one of the words that they called each other. Our apostles, our elders, our dis disciples. Go to Acts 9 and 26. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. So, they, so it said disciples. So it says when Saul came to Jerusalem and joined himself to the disciples. Did it say Christians? Okay, said the disciples. Uh, Acts 11 and 29. So now we said brethren, disciples, apostles. Still ain't got Christians. Go ahead. We in 11 and 29 in the book of Acts. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto brethren which dwell in Judea. Brethren, disciples. All right. Acts 5 and 14. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the most high. Multitudes both, men and women. They also called themselves believers. 
Okay? Where they were believers. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. Okay. So these guys called themselves all these names that we're going to. Okay? These guys, uh, you want to go go get that I think swans at the door. Uh, these guys did not call themselves Christians. Right? Remember, in Acts, uh, Acts 11 and 26, these guys were called what 